Hello, my name is Aaron Maloney. I am the creative director here at Reach Church, and welcome to another episode of What is Nothing But Jesus? This is a question we have been asking lots of people from around our church for a little while now, and today I am happy to ask that question to Zach Bibb. Zach Bibb not only goes to the church, but he also is heavily involved with Firm Foundation, and uh, I'm really happy to have you here. How you doing, Zach? What's up, brother? God is good. You know, we're here in the lab. You know, it's good to be here. Yeah. I'm excited. It's awesome. These chairs are comfortable. Oh, right. I know. I know. I like that you called it the lab, too. That's yeah. first. That's cool. Um, well, hey, let's get right into it. Uh, can you first answer the question, uh, what is nothing but Jesus? What does it mean to you? Wow. I've watched a couple of these. So I, I, um, I kind of know the format and I try not to think too much about it. But um, nothing but Jesus to me means finding out who you are in Christ. And to me, that's a process. Like looking back in life, I had many perspectives and perceptions on what God was and what Jesus was. And when I got saved about seven years ago, God predestined the time. Got, I got saved and my son got saved when we went public with our faith. But it wasn't like, a, you know, some people have a, a salvation story where hey, that was the moment that I gave. Mine was mm -hmm. gradual because I, I believe God had grace and mercy on me because yeah. he prepared me with the pain I had been through and to, for a, a just wasn't my case. So it was gradual over time. And, and he lit me on fire for service. And he sent me out with the tools I had, my testimony and experiences I had in addiction. And uh, I believe nothing but Jesus is actually when God reveals to you your purpose and you're in it and you feel the fulfillment and the relationship with God in that moment. And you can have that in prayer. You can feel the Holy Spirit. But when you're operating and he's at the wheel, so to speak. And you're walking in the spirit. Um, going back to the world and what the world offers and storing your treasures up here, caring what people think, it just pales in comparison to walking with your creator, or walking with Christ the way he made you to grow his kingdom and walking his promises. I, I've I've never experienced anything like it. And it's hard to explain to a non-believer or someone early in their faith, but it's basically the hope and the promise in each one of us mm. that other things we won't desire and he will be leading us all the time um, through a relationship with Christ. That's awesome. And what he put in us. Yeah, no, totally. It's, it's wild how you, there's no way to explain it, but sometimes you just, you know, when you're doing what you're supposed to be doing, mm -hmm, like absolutely. what you're called to be doing. Right. Um, and even sometimes it might, it's not the easy choice. A lot of times it's not the easy choice. Maybe even most of the time it's not the easy choice. I tell people um, all the time, it's not me. Yeah. Like it's not my choice. You know, yeah. I, it's, it's, um, it's, you know, you know, mm -hmm. you might, the flesh might operate. You may uh, operate in doubt or fall short or fall down, but you know, right. You don't just know what he put in you. You know, your gift, you know what you're supposed to be doing, but you, he always seems to bring you back to yeah. that. Like, you know, rock, your fortress, he always puts you back uh, on mission uh, and you can't leave it. And that to me is nothing but Jesus. The pastor here at the church, some of the church members in the worship band, you, um, and we're always growing in that. We want more of that. Yeah. But it, someone who hasn't experienced it, it may seem far-fetched to them. Totally, understandably. <laughs> um, so I guess that leads me into my second question. You kind of uh, touched on this a little bit, but can you give us like a specific example of where you've seen nothing but Jesus uh, play out in your life? Oh, absolutely. Um, you know, I was, I tell this story a lot. And I just, it, it's a good story um, for me, but I was living in sin. I was dating my wife who, you know, and I was, I would get random thoughts and we call them thoughts, not our own or, or, um, you know, words, not our own. We know that, you know, it's, it just comes out of nowhere. But I had a sequence of events happen to me within a, a three week period. I had someone that was a dear friend of mine and this is before I got saved now. And I knew of God, but I, I didn't have a relationship with God. You know, I, I was never the guy that said, oh, God isn't real. That wasn't me. God was always real. I just wasn't good enough. And I worked the way I was taught and the way I experienced life to, to earn it, you know, an accomplishment or work or, but uh, through recovery, I had relationships and I had some clean time uh, off of all substances. And that stuff was was losing its its appeal to me, but I hadn't let go of it yet. The job, all that. Um, I worked with a guy and, and he ended up uh, committing suicide and he sent me the suicide note. I never forget. I was sitting home with my girlfriend at the time, who's now my wife. 
and we weren't even living there. We were, and I said, can you read this? And then another friend of mine, we were serving together because I always served in the recovery community. And um, he ended up reaching out to me for help and I wasn't available for others. I didn't have that heart change. I didn't really care about mm -hmm. time for others. And um, even in disobedience, even in operating outside the way I was designed, see, God never caused those bad things to happen, but he used them for my good. Mm. He, um, I was so ready to come. It was like perfect timing. He had that wife of mine, who's my girlfriend, come home, and, and they're always inviting you to church. I don't know if you've had this experience. Yeah. They're always like, come to church, come to church. I'm like, yo, it is not for me. <laughs> like, you know, I'm running from the church, yeah. right? And it's in me the whole time. And um, and what God did with me, he said, hey, man, I was out of fellowship. I wasn't, I wasn't sponsored. I, I was clean, but I was living wrong. And in that, um, when she came home and she said, hey, they got recovery at the church. I experienced it. I felt it. It wasn't like I said out loud, but in my spirit, I was like, you know what, God, I'm coming. Mm. And I walked through the fear and the insecurity and, and the false hood of my past. And I, I went to that church and it wasn't this church, but it was the church for me. Mm -hmm. And uh, the joy in people scared the heck out of that thing that had to leave me. And God began to work on me and draw me in. And eventually I got saved. But before I was saved, he knew what he put in me. Yeah. And he didn't cause the stuff that I went through in the world, but he definitely used it and equipped me for what I'm doing today. And if that wasn't Jesus Christ himself of Nazareth, yeah, no one else can do it. You know, Totally. And it's cool because now how many lives has he used your life to minister to so many other lives and help so many other people. And then their lives will then help other people the same way that other people helped you and invited you to church. And it's, it's just this kind of lineage of uh the impact that you have on others you know and that others have on us and you never know where it might uh go it's the kingdom of god you know yeah. a seed that drops a seed it grows a tree that drops a seed it, it continues to grow and what god can do is he can take a generational curse you know when you come to him mm -hmm. and you and you get in a relationship with god he can turn that around and make it a generation blaze generational blessing not only do I, i'm not helping people but my honesty my practice in a relationship with God and a program of recovery, my dad's story, my mom's story, my family's story, um, we're breaking chains in mm -hmm. our own family, like, in, and my son and, and just in being honest and allowing God in, he'll do a work, yeah. you know, that's all. He can't operate in a lie. So yeah. if I don't ask for help or if I don't get honest about my history, he evaporates, you know? So yeah. I want him close. So I got to stay confessed up, prayed up and in service. And uh, opportunities like this, I'll never say no to because it's a platform. There's someone out there listening that needs to hear what getting honest out in the atmosphere yeah. will allow God to do in your heart. Well, thank you so much, Zach. It's been great uh, talking with you and hearing from you. And uh, I appreciate you being here. Anytime. I love it, man. It's, it's awesome to sit down and chop it up with you. And the topic, nothing but Jesus. I love it. Awesome. Well, again, we are Reach Church. We're located in uh, Bear, Delaware, and our services are at 10 a.m. on Sunday mornings. We hope to see you there.